Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's Tech How-To, brought to you by Tekra. My name is Dylan Adink, and today we are going to be configuring the Meraki Client VPN. The Client VPN is a great tool for remote workers to access on-prem company resources such as file shares, RDP sessions, and other resources your domain may have. What's really cool about the Meraki Client VPN is, is that it can also be protected by Cisco Duo with multi-factor authentication. We will discuss that more in a future video. Cisco Meraki supports three different types of authentication with the client VPN. They support Meraki Cloud Authentication, AD Authentication, and Radius Authentication. Meraki Cloud Authentication is configured in the Meraki dashboard. It includes setting up a user with an email and password that is set in the dashboard. This method is best used for small offices that do not include an on-prem Active Directory environment. Active Directory integration allows all AD users to authenticate with the VPN. Radius authentication allows you to grant specific access to users with an Active Directory security group. So today, we're going to be configuring the client VPN with Active Directory integration on our Winona Office Network. First, we have to create the client VPN connection in, in the dashboard. To do this, we're going to navigate to Security and SD-WAN, Client VPN, where you'll be brought to this page here. And we're going to go ahead and select Enabled. And the first thing we have to do is come up with an IP P range for our, sub, or for our subnet for the client VPN. So I'm going to use 10.10.20.0.24. And it's important to note that this subnet cannot be used anywhere else on your network, or it'll create routing issues for active connection or actively connected users. For the DNS server, you can either use Google's public DNS, Cisco Umbrella, if you have the uh, Umbrella integration set up with the Meraki dashboard, or you can use specific name servers like your on-prem uh, domain controller or other DNS servers you may have. So I'm going to go ahead and use. Uh, this DNS server that we have at the Winona office. Uh, I already filled in the pre-shared secret, uh, just so for the sake of time. And I also selected Active Directory Authentication with the short domain ITECRA, and then the IP address of our domain controller, and then our uh, Meraki Domain Administrator account. This account does have to be a domain administrator because it has to be able to read all of the users that are in AD. So go ahead and select Save Changes. And just like that, that's all you have to do. That's the uh, dashboard side of configuring the client VPN. But we still have to configure our client to test this out. So open this Settings app in Windows and then search for VPN and add a VPN connection. So we're going to go ahead and use Windows built-in for the VPN connection type. And for the connection name, give it a friendly name. So I call mine Itecra Winona VPN. Pretty straightforward on what it is for me. And then I'm going to copy this host name address here. This host name address is the DNS entry for your public IP of your uh, MX uplink. So this address resolves to whatever your public IP address is. I really recommend using that instead of just the public IP address because IP addresses can change and if you don't have the DNS entry here, you'll have to go and recreate the adapter. So we're going to use L2TP IPsec with pre-shared key and I'm going to copy the pre-shared key that I put into dashboard. And then for the type of sign-in info, uh, we're going to use username and password. Generally, I don't like putting these in here because um, I like to, you know, enter my password every time I connect to the VPN. Also, if you change your AD password, you'll have to change the adapt or change the password on the adapter as well. So go ahead and click save, and you can see here our connection was made. But there's one more small step that we have to do. So click Change Adapter Options here, and this will open the control panel, and then right-click on your uh, VPN connection name, and select Properties. Now you can see here, if you go to the Security tab, 
there's a data encryption tab here. Go ahead and require encryption. And then allow these protocols. Unselect MS Chat V2 and select PAP. Now I know it says unencrypted password and that may have you wondering why you would do that. But the Meraki connection uh, with the IPsec tunnel that it forms automatically encrypts the connection. It just doesn't work with CHAP or CHAP v2. So go ahead and click OK. And now we'll try to connect to our network. So you'll put your domain name and then your username and your password. And as you can see here, we're connected. So let's do some tests here. Open a command prompt. And I'm just going to ping one of the VLAN interfaces on the Meraki. As you see here, I'm getting a reply from it. And now we'll just try out the domain controller. And you see we're able to at least ping or connect to the uh, resources on that network now. If you don't get a successful connection, have no fear. Uh, Meraki has great documentation and support on troubleshooting client VPN connections. A uh, few steps that you can do before you contact support uh, would be reviewing the event viewer logs, uh, specifically under the application section. These logs will, if you can't connect, will contain an error code, and Meraki has a great document that uh, tells you about all, almost all the error codes that you'll you'll receive and uh, steps that you can do to fix them. Uh, common issues that I've seen are uh, misconfigured pre-shared keys, uh, misentered AD passwords or usernames, or not selecting the correct security protocol in the control panel. Uh, another good step uh, would be to take, uh, pack, take a packet capture on the WAN interface of your MX and check and see if your public IP address is hitting your connection at all, or hitting your MX at all. If it's not, uh, most likely you'll have to work with your ISP or whoever has an upstream device and make sure that UDP ports 500 and 4500 are not being blocked as they're needed to complete the connection. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's tech how to. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content. Uh, feel free to share this video with anyone that, who might use it or check us out at itecker.com and follow us on social media platforms. Mm -hmm.